How's it going everyone? It's Avi from Weather SpongeBob Thousand and in this video we're going to take a look at two tropical disturbances and determine if they have the possibility of developing into a tropical storm or potentially a hurricane in the more long term future and impacting as the United States and Central American coast. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather like calls. Make sure to like if you like this video and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather like calls. So let's begin by well, taking a look at the five day graph tropical weather outlook so we do see that we're watching two tropical disturbances we have one that could develop very close to the mainland of the united states it currently has a low chance of developing but it's at least something to be aware of especially since it could bring heavy rain along the coast of texas and louisiana and could potentially become our first tropical storm landfall along the united states however it seems less likely that's going to happen only a 20 percent chance this sub develops over the next five days but we have to wait and see how the conditions will play out over the next several days to really determine if the chance will go up or will completely diminish so we'll just have to wait and see however we're taking a look at also this disturbance which now has an 80 percent chance of developing within the next five days so it's pretty much guaranteed that we're at least gonna see a tropical depression or a tropical storm out of this and it should impact potentially the northern coast of venezuela and potentially and potentially on the southern coast of central america so it's suddenly something to keep in mind especially since this does have it's under fa very favorable conditions to develop into a hurricane so we need to pay close attention to this throughout the northern coast of south america and along the coast of central america as well now take a look at the current water vapor imagery we do see that there's a lot of thunderstorm convection going on around invest 94l this um, which is a low pressure system that's expected to impact the northern coast of Venezuela as well as the coastal areas of Central America. We do see that the thunder shower activity is very scattered. We're going to need to wait and see if we're going to see more of a blow up of thunderstorm activity to really determine where that center of circulation will be located. So we're just going to need to wait and see how the convection plays out over the next several hours to determine if we will see Tropical Storm Bonnie within the next 48 hours, which is certainly a possibility. It does have a 60% chance of that happening. We just need to see the con the convection be a little bit more well defined around one area rather than being all scattered and over a broad area like that because then the energy isn't really distributed into one area it's pretty much scattered all around that energy so as a result the wind speed isn't as strong when we see thunderstorm activity this spread out so we're gonna need to wait and see um, the convection really spiral around one area before we could really determine if this does become tropical storm bonnie and if the wind speed does speed up a bit uh where it could be considered a tropical storm now take a look at what the gfs model is forecasting it is definitely concerning because the gfs model wants to I'd say develop this into a tropical storm right around the two to three day time frame between 48 hours and 72 hours. And it should pretty much meander around the, um, should maintain its strength as it pretty much hugs the Venezuela coast. So it won't really strengthen much between now and I'd say the next four days. But uh, the GFS model beyond the four day mark really does want to develop this into quite a strong tropical cyclone. If I were to continue to move forward, you see the pressure continuously drops as it approaches Central America. Now we're seeing a millibar pressure down to the 980s, which is equivalent almost to a category one hurricane. And we do see the pressure drop down to 974 millibars just before landfall which would definitely be concerning along the central american coast and you see that it's the gfs model at this point is mainly taking a southern track which seems like this it's pretty much inevitable it is going to take the southern track it it's unlikely it's going to take any sort of leap northward maybe to 
towards Puerto Rico or the Dominican Republic as it seems likely that we're going to see just enough ridging to the north of it to steer this to the west. So it's unlikely we're going to see this diverge away from the southern path. So it's certainly something to keep that in mind along the coast of Venezuela that it seems likely you will experience impacts associated with the solar pressure system and Central America, at least somewhere along the coast, it seems likely you will um, experience at least some sort of impacts with this old pressure system, whether it is a tropical storm or a hurricane. So it's something it's something to be at high alert right now for Central America and the northern coast of maybe Colombia and Venezuela at this point. So um, you're so if I were to show you guys the upper level winds over the area, give me just one second right here. Um, so showing you guys wind shear forecast provided from the GFS model, we do see that there's going to be a little bit of an upper level high over this center of circulation, but it won't really be enough to create a strong amount of upper level winds over this storm because you see that the stronger upper level winds are relegated further southward closer to Venezuela and Colombia, while this low pressure system will be a little bit too far north to experience those stronger upper level winds. So as a result, it has a pretty open area to um, gradually and intensify especially once it reaches this area of the southwestern portion of the Caribbean between Colombia and the Central American coast where it does have an open area where the wind shear will be extremely light the sea surface temperatures are of course very warm in this area with a high amount of upper ocean heat content relative to the month of June so this definitely does have a uh, very easy path to really strengthening as it heads towards the Central American coast which is definitely a major concern if we were to take a look at what the European model is forecasting during that same time period let's take a look at the 12z run you're gonna see that the European model also isn't expecting um, much wind shear to hinder the storm. It's suddenly a bit stronger than what you're seeing with the GFS model, which is the reason why the European model is a little bit weaker. But we do see that the, the wind shear for the most part is light enough to at least support for a tropical storm making landfall along the Central American coast. So that's gonna be something to pay close attention to. We're gonna need to wait and see how strong this upper level high will be to really determine how strong the upper level winds will be to determine the strength of this storm as it moves, continues to move westward. So I'll keep you guys updated. As of right now, it seems like most likely we're gonna see a tropical storm or a hurricane somewhere in Central America. I don't think it's, I don't, I pretty much think it's um, much less likely that we're just going to see this completely um, dissolve by the time this reaches the Central American coast. But there's still a decent amount of uncertainty because, again, we're still beyond the five day point to where this makes landfall along Central America. So maybe the wind shear is a little bit stronger. But at this point in time, I think a tropical storm or a hurricane is likely at this um, at this point. So you need to be on um, on high alert throughout Central America and the northern portion of Venezuela. Now, in terms of the amount of humidity that's expected uh, um, throughout the Caribbean, uh, humidity won't be much of a problem either as there's just gonna be a lot of lift in the atmosphere, um, just enough convection in, um, right around the Caribbean to support for a tropical storm. We do have a decent amount of dry air just so west of it, but the storm circulation is so small that it isn't really absorbing much of that dry air. So as a result, it isn't really inhibiting this as it heads further westward. The really only hope that to weaken this so pressure system is if the wind shear is that strong as what the European model is forecasting, or maybe even a little bit stronger. That's a possibility of, as well, but. I think most likely we will see a tropical storm or maybe even a hurricane make landfall along Central America. So keep that in mind um, um, throughout um, the northern portion of South America and the Central American countries. Now, um, to show you guys the ensemble members, what they're stating at this point, you see that pretty much uh, vast, pretty much all of them are taking the southern track. So that definitely does raise certainty, which is definitely good news at the track. 
is now fairly certain this isn't one of those cases where this could drift northward or well further southward it seems likely it will move in this general vicinity so that definitely does raise the certainty it does become a little bit more uncertain i'd say of course past the five day mark because there it, there has been some guidance that have been wanting to take this further northward closer to belize and the yucatan peninsula of metzco um really all depends on how much of a weakness there is in this ridging by the time this approaches the southwestern portion of the caribbean but at this point the uh, um the most likely scenario is that this impacts anywhere between costa rica and nicaragua you need to pay um, it seems that like landfall is most likely in those countries, but don't rule out that this maybe could move northward than initially anticipated. So I'll keep you guys updated regarding the track forecast, but it seems like the southern track is going to happen now taking a look at the model intensity guidance it does become a little concerned because we do see quite a bit of the ensemble members wanting to take this to um hurricane status and pretty much all of the ensemble members are at least taking this as a tropical storm so it seems like they we're going to see a tropical storm out of this at this point ah, almost guaranteed at this point and i think a category one or category two hurricane is certainly in the realm of possibility so we're going to need to keep that in mind now take a look at um, my forecast when it comes to um, potential tropical storm Bonnie. I'm expecting this to maintain its strength right around 30 miles per hour till Tuesday afternoon. And I expect this to strengthen into tropical storm status right around Wednesday. And then it should gradually intensify till Friday when it reaches 50 miles per hour. But I do believe that beyond the Friday point, that's when we should expect even more strengthening than what you see right here. The reason why I didn't really exemplify that in this graphic is because still beyond the five day mark, there's still a high amount of uncertainty. So I don't want to say it's necessarily going to strengthen very rapidly um, when we're still six days away from the Saturday time frame. But I have a bad feeling that we're going to see a strengthening storm as it approaches central america that could be closer to hurricane status so make sure to pay close attention to that um throughout central america and the northern portion of south america but anyways guys i thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and i hope you guys have a great day